All right, shout out to Logan. All right, so it's come time. People want to know what my martial arts resume is and why the fuck I feel like I can comment comment on a MMA. All right, here's what's up. My cousin, so I think it would be second cousin, my mom's mom's brother, maybe he's an uncle, is Dr. Kayvon Dehnad. And Kayvon Dehnad um, is, he, he refed judo in the Olympics out of Iran. He moved to Switzerland. He was offered a council seat on the judo council, whatever that is. And he was going to be the youngest one ever. So he uh, turned it down. And then I think he's since accepted the seat. So I think he, you know, sits on the actual ancient judo council whatever. When I was young, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, um, he would come and visit for months at a time. And then he would, he would teach me and my brother judo. Well, what I've come to learn is that judo is cut in half. The Olympic style tournament style judo is cut in half. We learned strikes. We learned a lot of strikes. We learned a lot of meditation. It was a lot of meditation, a lot of yoga, that was built in. They would tape sticks to our fingers and have it shoot out of our middle knuckle and teach us how to strike. We would sit for hours and hold this imaginary egg in meditative positions so that we'd learn how to fucking have a good fist. Um, and then we'd also sit for hours and, and have judo hands. We would do more more functional movement looking, yoga looking, tai chi looking exercise, and more meditation than we did anything that had to do with actual physical aggression. We had to take epic amounts of oaths and swears on how to use judo for righteousness. And uh, the, the primary motivation for him is he wanted to teach his family had to defend themselves. And uh, so I learned judo there. I also went to a judo studio where esoteric martial artists, people that would travel from holy site to holy site and learn from masters on top of mountains in various countries and go to ashrams and go to temples to perfect their craft they also taught me and it was also a uh, a lot of initiation a lot of oaths a lot of swears and i can't by oath i can't really talk about that but what i could say is is it fell in line with what dr kevon denod had taught me where it was a lot of striking. We would strike for to learn how to breathe. Lots of breathing exercises. Lots of breathing exercises. Lots of meditation. Lots of using your mind to overcome the enemy. Lots of how to win a fight before it happens. How to not have to fight. That, I mean, that was, that was a huge portion of it. Was learning how to master yourself. And through mastering yourself. Easiest fight to win is one you don't have to get into. And um, and so that's what we did. And uh, then whenever I turned 18, I joined the Marine Corps. And I learned uh, a form of Gracie grappling. In the Marine Corps, they had the, the line system, which is the old hand-to-hand. -hand. And there was a brief period of time where there was an extracurricular system between before the new belt system called Marine Corps grappling. And I studied Marine Corps grappling. So when I say Justin Gagey is doing a form of judo that I was taught, he's doing a form of judo that I was taught. That was the first principles of it was if you can't stop the fight, if you can't win with your mind, then you keep them at distance. If you can't keep them at distance, you immediately cut the distance. If your strikes don't work, you immediately cut the distance and then you fucking either throw them and continue with judo 
And there was no arm bars. There was no leg locks. It was ripping the thing out of the socket. The tournament judo is half of it. The rest, it, critically wounding somebody is judo. That's a judo I learned. The rest is stopping short for whatever reason by ethic or code or ethos or whatever. So, so once again, yeah, shout out to Logan for asking. And, you know, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not the guy who knows martial arts. Like, I don't speak for judo. I, that's just what, I'm just telling you what my experience was. Was they, uh, I was a green belt. They told me that I, they were going to skip blue belt. Just skip it. And then, uh, I went to, uh, I was never awarded a brown belt. They showed it to me. They said, we would award this to you, but you're too young. You're too young. Uh, once they said that I have perfected the brown belt, so they presented me a brown belt. I couldn't touch it, right? They had the ceremony, whatever. And I took it away. Then after that, they showed me a black belt, but they, I didn't, wasn't presented. I was not presented with a black belt. They showed it to me. They said, all right, now we're going to teach you the black belt course or whatever. And um, when you get older, you can go back and get your brown belt and get your black belt. But I was taught all there was to know about judo. And that's that's it. That's what I know. And it all goes back to Adi Yogi, Shiva, who started to dance and transcended and he learned martial arts. <laughs> and then he learned yoga at the same time and then it kept getting passed down Parasuram Dronacharya Ashwatthama and then sages and all the sages and saints when they would travel to sacred sites they had to keep themselves protected they had to protect sacred knowledge and it wound up in Japan and there's the other half because the story now is is that samurais developed jujitsu and ninjas were the farmers that the samurais would pick on and they developed ninja skills and then they fought, they fought, they fought and one day some guy made judo and taught foreigners and now it's in the Olympics. That's the half of the story. It all starts with Adiyogi. Okay? And that's what I know about judo.